How is everyone? Yeah. Yeah. I heard it's payday today. Yeah. Yay! Because I was thinking if it wasn't payday and you were expecting to get your checks, if it didn't, this wouldn't be a good time to speak because you guys would not care what I have to say. <laughs> oh. So, thank you, Jennifer, for, for kind of setting the stage for realizing that we all see things differently, don't we? And there are a multitude, a multitude of different facets of why we see things differently, how we perceive things, from our coworkers to the clients we care for, to our families, to our spouses, to our kids, right? Let me ask you something. What do you see right here? Now, this is class participation. You guys have to participate. I am not going to stand up here for 40 minutes and lecture you. I want feedback. That's part of the rule of this, okay? So what do you guys see? Ball. 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 Anything else? Round. 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 Anything else? Something inside. Marble color. Color. Marble color. 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 Yep. Might be, have air inside. Might have air. Sure. Anything else? Kind of looks like a globe. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that. Definitely, huh? Might be a balloon. Could be. Although probably not. Anything else? Light. Light? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Anything else? It's reflective. It's reflective. It's Fantastic. Happy color. It is kind of a warm, happy color, isn't it? What if I told you that I saw a flower in a palm tree? Oh, yeah, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> now, who was right? All of us. Why? You had a different angle than everyone else, so you saw something different. I want you to repeat that back at the end of the meeting. He's going to be the next motivational speaker right there. <laughs> it's the way we see things from our angle, isn't it? Isn't that what makes all the difference? So let's talk about that for a second. What goes into our angle? What creates and define, defines our angle? I'll start off. How about things of the past? Experience. Lifestyle. Lifestyle. Personality. Personality. Character. Character. You guys are good. Emotions. Emotions. <laughs> Any others? I'm thinking of some really big ones. How about challenges? How about hurts? How about tragedies? Right? Disappointments? Don't raise your hand, but anybody in here been through a divorce? You didn't have to raise your hands. <laughs> Thank you for being honest. Most of the time they're not pleasant. We've all heard horror stories of that, right? Someone lost someone close to you, close to you. Do you think that affect your perspective on things? We all come from different backgrounds. We come from different places. And those things that which we have experienced and lived through shape who you are today and how you see the person sitting next to you. Now, here's the good news about that. You all got a smile on your face, so it can't be all too bad, right? But that means we all come from different places, and we all usually have a different perspective. So when you bring that into the workplace, and you say, golly gee, they thought I was picking on them, or they thought that I was bad-mouthing them, and I really wasn't, it's their perspective that has caused that. And it's not so much a you thing, as it is a them thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let me give you a little, a little bit of an example. Jennifer, can I get a water? Oh, shoot. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Pretty, please. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. So, so, here's, so here's just a little example. Perspective. A few months ago, I'm in a coffee shop. I'm about five back from the counter. And I'm just watching the gal behind the counter. She appears to be struggling can't find this, can't find that. She's going back and forth. And you could tell she was frustrated. And there was a, a, a gentleman back there that was helping her. 
but she just looked lost. And I kind of figured it was probably her first day, right? I mean, she was training and she was, she was really frustrated, overwhelmed. And so I just sat back and watched. Gift or a blessing or a curse, I'm not sure, but I, I love watching people and just figuring out what makes them tick and why they do what they do. I get up there a little bit closer to her and, and I decided I'm going to try and put a smile on her face, make her laugh, have a little fun, whatever I can do, right? We get up there and sure enough, I'm looking on her shirt and like all of you, name tag. And I looked at her name tag and sure enough, as I thought it would, said training, right? So I, I just got up there and I said, she goes, can I help you? And I, I just kind of smiled and I said, so your mom named you trainee, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and she, thank you so much. And she looks at me and she goes, oh, that's funny. It's Trené. <laughs> yeah. Now, although that's funny, at the moment, not so funny. Fifteen shades of red, all I could do can compose myself and pick myself up off the floor. And the guy behind me, he's just laughing, <laughs> which made it worse. Oh my gosh. Now, <clears throat> perspective, right? I looked at that situation, and I thought, I want to try and add a little happiness to her day. And I th genuinely thought I was doing the right thing. Clearly... I put my foot in my mouth, okay? So, <clears throat> when we are in a situation where there are multitudes of factors taking place in how we communicate with people, we all need to understand there are many things going on that we can't even see, we can't even identify with. There's things from tone to body language to your volume, to whether when I look at somebody and I speak with them, and am I looking in their eye and am I sincere? There's all these different things, and they create a perception of how we see stuff. We have, um, uh, in the agency, it is constantly, as we are dealing with clients, just like you guys, it is always a perception game. Because when someone calls us, it's usually a crisis, right? Mom fell, dad fell, they need help. And so we are trying to perceive what, where are they at in their intensity level? Where are they at? Is this a crisis 911? Or is this something that is, we are gonna get to them in a day or two, or we'll get care to them in three or four days? There's always perception, and even though we don't look at it, you don't see it, you don't think about this stuff. Perception and how we see people, how we see our coworkers, how we see our clients is a very real thing. I'd love to say that perception creates an impression. That impression will create an image. That image will create a belief. And we live our life by 90% of what we believe to be true. You can attach that to anything you want. It doesn't matter what it is. We live our life by what we believe to be true. But it all started with a perception. Okay? How many, let's do this, how many have ever heard of the reticular activating system? Anybody ever heard of that? Heard that term before? One person out of maybe 35, 40, fantastic. The reticular activating system. We've got this piece in our brains. People don't talk about this stuff, but I would love to share it with you. We've got this small part in our brain, not that big, that we call the RAS, R-A-S, reticular activating system. This thing is like a filter. Look at it as when we see something, like. I'm looking at this wonderful young gal up here. She's got a beautiful, bright, pinkish type of shirt on. And I think, oh, that's, that's a beautiful shirt. Gosh, I don't think I've seen that color before. And then have you ever noticed, you go out in public, and you're like, there's that color shirt again. And then you go out, there. 
I didn't see that color shirt before today ever, but now they're everywhere. Can anybody relate with that? Yeah. Yes. How many of you have went, uh, let's use a different example, you went car shopping. <laughs> <laughs> went car shopping. And here's this really sleek two-door sportster, and you're looking at it going, man, this is cool. I don't know that I've seen many of these. And you end up making the deal, you end up buying it, and as you're driving around town the first few days, you're like, what the heck? I'm, there's cars everywhere like this. <laughs> but you didn't see them prior to that, right? Here's what's going on. The reticular activating system acts like a filter. <clears throat> Its sole job in this case, it does many things, but in this case, all it does is grabs information that solidifies and validates your perception. My perception, she's got a beautiful bright pink shirt. It takes that information in, and the next time one of those comes around, oh, there, there's another one of those pink shirts. Funny though, I didn't notice the pink shirt prior to today. So this piece is a, and it literally is, a non-biased filter. It does not care right from wrong, left from right, good from bad, moral from immoral. It doesn't care. All it knows is to, gra is to gather data to verify and justify what it is that you have seen. So, just an example, because this is a hot topic right now, is got the big political debate all over the news, all over social media. If you're like me, you're sick and tired of hearing about it, sick and tired of the slams on this side, slams, all of this stuff. Have you ever wondered how it is that so many people know they're right over here. And so many people know they're right over here. Have you ever wondered that? Have you ever wondered how can there be so many people that are so separated on so many of our political issues? This little guy right here plays a part in that. I'm not saying it's all of it. Because you've got, you've got things like philosophy that plays a huge part. But what will happen is if you have a certain belief about a political party, the reticular activating system will step up. It turns on, boom, and it says, I'm going to find reasons to justify why I think it's this. And guess what? You will find a lot of reasons why it's this. You're over on this side. I knew it. I knew those dang Republicans. I knew that. Oh, they're just scandalous and everything. Ah, oh, guess what? On this side, this thing turns on and it's going to find all the reasons why you're right. It's not going to find any of the reasons you're wrong. <laughs> it's going to find all the reasons you're right. That's what its job is. That's what it does. Growing up, I had my dad. We lived across the street from a golf course. And, I mean, from I was this tall, it would rain. And there'd be golfers out there golfing, you know, they got their <laughs> umbrellas and stuff. And my dad would say, look at them crazy idiot golfers out there golfing in the rain. Can you believe that? Look at that. The wind's blowing sideways. Bunch of idiots. <laughs> I grew up, every time going by a golf course... <laughs> Right? And it's raining. What did I think? <laughs> yeah, he's right. Look at him. <laughs> Idiots, why would do that? Now, here's the funny part. My dad was a huge sportsman. Loved to fish. <laughs> Guess who fished in the rain? <laughs> <laughs> and guess who was right? So, this reticular activating system will justify you regardless of whether you're right or wrong. It does not care. It has no bias. So, when you... How many in here have family dynamics? Not, not here at work. 
family dynamics. <laughs> Anybody? Go ahead and raise your hand just a little bit. Come on. Okay. All right. So isn't it interesting to know that when you confide in a family member and they all of a sudden say, oh, yeah, gosh, I saw what she was doing the other day, that, that text message. Oh, that was so stupid. Like, what was she not thinking? <laughs> and all of a sudden we go into this mode of justifying what we're talking about because this looks for more activity of the same. And guess what? It'll find more activity of the same. Guaranteed. Okay? Is that some of that making sense? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay, there we go. All right. I want to make sure. I love speaking to healthcare groups. And the reason part, partly because obviously my day job is is uh, caring for people much like you guys. But beforehand, I was talking with my cameraman, uh, Jarl, and he goes, are you nervous? And I said, you know, I really, I really don't get nervous with this kind of stuff anymore. But once in a while, I get a little bit, a little bit shaky. And uh, the last time, it always brings me back to a story. The last time I saw my grandma uh, was about uh, 10 years ago. Um, we were in the assisted living building in Nevada, and I knew it was going to be the last time I got to see her. I knew that her days were very numbered, and with her living there and me living here, there was just no way to spend more time with her. And so we're sitting there at her coffee table, and you guys will appreciate this. My grandma had a wonderful sense of humor, and uh, it, she just always made me laugh. But I'm sitting there at the coffee table, and... Um, she reaches over, and she had Parkinson's pretty bad, you know, so she's shaking. And she reaches over to, to grab the cup, and she brings it back. And, and that coffee's coming out of the rim there, and I didn't know if it was going to make it back to her. And I just kind of said, Grandma, do you drink much coffee? <laughs> and without missing the beat, she says, no, I spill most of it. <laughs> <laughs> can't make that stuff up. You just can't make that stuff up. <laughs> All right, how many of you guys have ever seen this book? Show of hands. What is it? One, two, three, five, seven. The five love languages. Well, you're going to say, whoa, wait a minute. Love languages were at work. What are you talking about, love languages? <laughs> Dr. Gary Chapman, a psychologist and marriage counselor, he has created five languages that people, the way they really receive things, the way they respond things, the way they feel valued, the way that they feel loved. And it really is a universal application. It's not just for marriages. It's not just for kids or parents. It's really coworkers. Because what he talks about in this book is how people respond to the way that we talk to them, how we treat them, how activities we do affect them. And so I've used some of his material a little bit just kind of off the side, just as an example, because in the workplace, there's all kinds of dynamics, and there's all kinds of intensity levels. And so I kind of refer to him as the five response styles, rather than call them the five love languages, simply because this is a better application for it. And really, The first one here, we're going to go into it. For those have, that have read this book, do you want to shout out? We want to take, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I just had an idea. Oh, okay. Mother's physical touch. Yep, so let's call the first one touch. <coughs> now, for the application of what we're talking about, he, he, let me give you a great example. I may come up and say, what's your name? Elena. Elena, I'm Scott. It is so nice to meet you. Now, did you see the way I shook her hand and how I had my hand on top? That portrays sincerity. I wasn't creeping her out. I had eyes on her. <laughs> That's, her <laughs> That's her perception. That's exactly right. But the touch, I was sincere. So if I were to come up to somebody and say, gosh, that is just, I love that shirt. That is awesome. If someone has that style of touch, they are going to respond very well to that because they will know 
I was sincere. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. So someone does a handshake, they do a hug. I mean, some, any huggers in the room? It's <laughs> overwhelmed. <laughs> okay. So tell me the truth. Doesn't it feel good to give a hug and be hugged? Yes. yes. So we've got some people who do that's your, that's your response stuff. And and what is that what does that communicate? Trust? Trust. Love, trust. What else? Happiness. Happiness. What else? Anything? Care. Care. Absolutely. Isn't that what we do here? We care for people, right? All right. Number two. What's the second one? <coughs> affirmation. Affirmation. So let's say let's say words. Words of affirmation. Let's do it. Words. This is great. We're going to get you up here teaching this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Words. <laughs> Don't worry. Your your day still <laughs> Words. How many have heard? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. It's just as easy to say, I really love your smile. You, you, you just brighten up my day. As opposed to saying, well, that, that was stupid. Why'd you do that? <laughs> do, you feel, do you feel the difference in the room when someone speaks like that? It, can you notice it? Words mean <coughs> everything and how we say them. Now, earlier I talked about tone, talked about volume. We talked about body language. If you're looking at somebody eye to eye, all of those things play a part in how we perceive one's words. Right? And it's easy when we're frustrated, <laughs> when we've got a lot going on, we're out of time. It's, isn't it easy to cut our words short and be a little bit crass when we really don't mean to be? And it's not even someone else, but it's us. Yes? By the way, I apologize to everybody this morning. I was really grouchy. <laughs> so just just letting you know, I was really short with some people this morning, and I apologize because I there was you know people coming at me, and I was trying to get some stuff done so they could get what they wanted, but they were asking me a lot of questions. So I apologize. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. 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 Okay. It was crazy. <laughs> well, I wasn't even there, and I forgive you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, okay, great example. Thank, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Uh, for sharing that, and and you know myself as well. We have times where we're just we're put under the gun, the stress, the pressure, and unfortunately, what comes out is not necessarily what's here, but what's going on here, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to be mindful of that. So again, words. Another way in which uh, in which we response our response to people. So words. Let's do. Uh, oops. Let's do number three. Quality time. Quality time. <laughs> Quality time. <laughs> let's do time. You get these memorized. Huh? Do you want to? Do you want to teach? No, no, no. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> really, I'm fine. Okay. Time. How we spend our time with one another. What does that mean? What does that look like? Sometimes quality time with someone is just two or three minutes walking with them in the hall, listening to them vent. Sometimes that's two or three minutes with someone, and maybe they just need us to pray with them or give them an encouraging word. Maybe they're having a rough day, right? Sometimes people just want to be left alone, right? See, we all process things differently, don't we? And there's not a right or a wrong in this. But time in response in the workplace is a big one because we never know what's going on up here. I don't know what's going on with you today or yesterday. I don't know what's going on with you today or yesterday. <clears throat> I can only presume or hope that it was good, but those things will affect how we interact with other people. Number four. Acts of service. Uh, yeah, acts of service. Exer I'm sorry, what? Acts of service. Acts of service. Oh, you're getting involved. I love it. <laughs> That's my husband. Acts of service. <laughs> I'm quality time. Acts of service. Give me a great example of, of what that is. What does that look like? Acts of service. Like when my husband will clean the gutters out when what I want. <laughs> yeah. and we'll go, Woo. You know, because for him that's the expression of love. Oh. 
is yeah. doing things for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, can I interject for a minute? Mm -hmm. Helping with the dishes or doing the dishes? Mm -hmm. Laundry? Washing, vacuuming out the car? Cooking. Yeah. Cooking? Excellent. So, how does that bleed over into the workplace? Hey, can I help you with that today? I've got a little extra time. Can I take that off your plate? I know you're just really busy. <laughs> Right? Do. <laughs> <laughs> How about another example? Acts of service. How we can we can help give or take something off of our coworkers' plate? Give me an example. Getting some vital signs for Yeah. Water for granted. Big place. Hey, I'm gonna be down at the South Wing. Rather than you walk down there for that, why don't I just go ahead and do that for you? Really? My feet are killing me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right? This is an example. Acts of service. Is everybody following this? Yes. Okay. What's the fifth one? Receiving gifts. Gifts. <laughs> Can you read my sloppy writing? Yeah. Sorry. Gifts. gifts. Little gifts, a card that says, thank you, I appreciate you, right? Maybe it's, hey, why don't you go ahead and clock out 15 minutes early. I'll go ahead and take and finish up for you. I'm going to give you a gift, 15 minutes, so you can go to your, your son or daughter's event so you won't be late. Giving the gift. Anybody have any examples of, of gifts? Receiving coffee. <laughs> no, that's a really good one. It's a really, it's very, very valid. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Copies are a thing, guys. Just saying. Just saying. You know, I want to give a gift. Just saying. How about another? What's another one? Yeah. It goes with the first one, receiving gifts of touch, gifts like a hug or. Right. Yeah. So, like, a gift doesn't have to be physical. Like. You know, presented you know as a as a thing, but as just a temporary something. Yes. Yeah. Anybody else? Giving praise to someone for something that they've done for another person. Words. Yeah. Absolutely. Words. To some people, words mean everything. Just a slight. Man, you did a fantastic job. Thank you so much. That that room looks great, and I know they're going to be happy. That sometimes will carry people through the rest of the day. Just <laughs> a little word. Of, yeah, she knows, doesn't she? Absolutely. It will. So all of these things play a part. I'll give you an example. Two examples, actually. What I'm going to do first off... You guys might get to watch this whole thing come down and then laugh. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yep, close. Can I put this on there, Jennifer? Thank you. Sure. All right. There it's not facing you guys, but I don't think it'll stick to that. So, um, My in-laws. I grew up right next door to their house. So, yes, I married the neighbor girl. That's true. <laughs> That's a true story. Two years ago, we celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. 17 years of Christmas dinners, Thanksgiving dinners, birthdays, summer barbecues. We've been on four vacations together. Twice. Twice. I've seen them hold hands. <clears throat> Twice. That's sad. Now, but here's what that says. Their style is not touch. And both of them are that way. Not just one. Both of them. Rather, both of them have that communication style. In this case, the love style. Acts of service. It baffles me how they could only hold hands twice <laughs> in 17 years of being a part of their family. I don't get it. <laughs> but it works, 
right? Three and a half years ago, I went to work at Visiting Angels. I started as the scheduler. Got a scheduler in here? Anybody do scheduling? Raise your hand. Oh, isn't that a fun job? Yeah. Well, it's a lot of juggling, I tell you what. It's a, lot of <laughs> it's a constant puzzle yeah. that you that keeps coming undone and you gotta put it back together, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. There was this gal, <clears throat> young college lady, her name was Nikki. I can tell you that because she doesn't work for us anymore. <laughs> Nikki sat at the front desk. When I first started there the very first day, I met Nikki, shook hands. In fact, I met everybody. <clears throat> a week later, I tried to engage in a conversation with Nikki, a little surface. Nikki wasn't having anything to do with that. She's kind of keeping me out here. I was like, that's weird. <clears throat> Second week goes by, I try again to engage in a conversation, meaningful conversation. Again, out here, she wasn't having anything to do with that. <clears throat> I always kind of thought I was a likable guy. Thought. Third week, fourth week, fifth week, sixth week, I can't get Nikki to engage with me. Now, I'm bent. Because everybody else, we know about their kids, we know what's going on in their life. Not drama, but, I mean, we're, we've got a friendship now. But not Nikki and I. So, I'm going to fix this. <laughs> I go to work. Okay. I come into work on a Monday, I walk past Nikki's desk, and I say, wow, Nikki, that dress looks fantastic on you. That looks great. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, I come in, walk in, go past Nikki, I say, I got some extra time today, and I'm just you know, going to be answering phones. If I can help you with something, let me know. I'd love to take some of the workload off. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. But I keep moving forward. I walk in to the Visiting Angels office. Brought a lifesaver. Now, not a big bag like this, but a little roll, right? Good morning, Nikki. Hey, would you like to have a lifesaver? Oh, I, I love lifesavers. Yeah! Can I, can I, I have, like the green ones. Can I have the green ones? <laughs> Walls went down, and all of a sudden, this gal opens up to me, and we start talking back and forth and have a deep conversation. She's telling me about her weekend. She's telling me she went fishing with her boyfriend, telling me about college all over because I brought her a little gift. It wasn't really the lifesaver, right? Anybody? Uh -huh. Lifesavers? Oh, he likes lifesavers. <laughs> sorry. If I hit you in the head, I'm sorry. All the way in the back? All the way in the back. Woo! Oh. What happened? It took five minutes, and I got rid of my own preconceived notions about Nikki. Because quite frankly, guys, maybe you can relate with me, what was I thinking she was when she wouldn't respond? <laughs> <laughs> right? That was my first initial reaction. And here's the deal. That wasn't necessarily bad, but that was my perception. That's all I had to go by when I suspended that. When I stopped and went, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe this isn't a her thing. Maybe this is a me thing. I'm going to try. I'm going to try this. Okay? When I did that, everything changed. She hasn't worked there in about seven months. And about every other month, we go have lunch. We just talk. We're buds. I call her my little sister. She calls me her big brother. And it was all because I chose to suspend my belief about what I thought she was and just say, I'm going to try a different approach. And what I want to ask you is how many times, whether it's here at Waterford Grand or whether it's
it's with the clients in their rooms, or whether it's at home with your families. How many times do we immediately jump to the negative that we think something is a certain way, and it really, maybe it's not? How many in here have had clients, care recipients, maybe is a better way, that have been really tough to deal with? Really tough. Go ahead, raise your hand. <laughs> Do you know that every one of those people also have people around them that love them, like them, and think they're just the greatest thing? Yes. <laughs> Who's right? It's something to think about, isn't it? Let's see if I can do this without. Ooh. There we go. Are we okay on time, Jennifer? Sure. I haven't been watching. I'm neither. We're good. <laughs> I want to show you guys something that when I first saw this, it was very powerful to me and it was very eye opening. And it really comes down to about our choices in life and how we choose to perceive people, how we choose to perceive a situation. And some of this is, is going to have to go in and process a little bit. And some of you, it might be the right time that you're going to take what I'm going to show you, and it's going to be very, very powerful. And you're going to be able to apply it in your life. Because here's the deal. I can come in here and give the, the best talk, which this isn't, but I could give you the best talk in the world, and if you don't take anything away from here today and apply it, this was just a show. And I'm really not a showman. Okay? So take some of these things. Um, we're talking about these right here. If you can apply this to your life, you can improve your relationships. You can bring peace into your life. And I know because I've done it share a story with you at the end of this. This right here alone could be a two-hour seminar. And I've done two-hour seminars on that because we can get really deep on it and it'll really help you to understand things. So maybe Jennifer, that's for another time. Uh -huh. But let's do this. We have this called <laughs> okay, E plus C equals O. So it looks like a tire here that's flat on one side. That's cool. <laughs> An artist, I am not. <laughs> Event, choice, and the outcome. How many in here will agree and fully understand the events up to today, the events that have happened in our life, we had about this much control over. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So whether that was something yesterday that you caught wind that there's a family member maybe that's ill, or your spouse said, we need to have a talk. <laughs> or maybe it was that you found out somebody was mad at you the event, regardless of what it is, we have little control over that. Even if we did have control over it, could we change it really at all? Probably not. Okay? Choice. How do we choose to react to that? How do we respond to what's happening? Whether it's really, really bad, it's good, it's neutral, its intensity level is up here, or it's down here. The choice of how we respond to that. Ever, how many in here understands? Now, this is a hard pill to swallow, gang, and I understand that. How many understand that our choices equal our outcome? How many understand that? Let me throw this in. This is easy to understand, but how many people truly believe that? hands. That's a hard thing to grasp. But the reality is this. 
We cannot change this. You cannot change the event. If you leave here today and someone rear ends you, you, you probably didn't have any control over it. It's the event. Life, isn't it? Sucks. <laughs> the choice of how we respond to that in this equation, the choice, the decisions we make, the attitude we choose to respond to it, the choice that we choose to use in responding to a person who attacks us, who says something bad about us, that choice will change this. Every single time. The choice, our decisions. Do we say something? Do we not say something? Do I splash back with anger and frustration? Or do I sit and do I listen? Your choice. Your choices have brought you right here today to this room. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> I almost feel like I want to come answer somebody's phone or something. <laughs> Choice. I chose to look at Nikki in a different light. Now, that took effort. I'm not saying that was easy, because let's face it, don't we all want to be right? <laughs> Raise your hand. You want to be right. It's our human nature. We want to be right. I don't want to admit to you I'm wrong. I'm right. So what we have to do is you have to be cognizant of that. You have to be aware to that. You have to understand that if I am going to change my outcome, if I'm going to change this situation that I don't like right now, I have to change my decision on how I'm going to respond to it. That's all you've got. That's all you have is the choice. I was 22 years old. really didn't have any foundation in my life. I didn't have any career in mind. All I cared about was working hard and playing hard. And if I could make enough money during the winter so I could play twice as hard during the summer, that was fine with me. On August 5th, 1991, my world changed. <clears throat> I lost my mom and dad. And two weeks later, I lost my grandma. Three people that I was closest to. I know what loss is. <clears throat> Just a kid. <laughs> Immature, no confidence. I just wanted to play. And for a few years, I kind of went crazy, went off the tracks. At about 25, this equation came into my life, and I realized I had to change my choices. I had to change my decisions, because where I was headed was not fun. My relationships didn't work, I didn't trust people, and I would never make myself vulnerable to people. I wouldn't let people in this inner circle. I started changing my choices. I started going to counseling, getting my head screwed on straight. I started dealing with some of the hurt, the anger, the bitterness from the past. That started changing my outcome. <clears throat> I've had people tell me that know the full story and the ugly details of it. Scott, you had every reason to just not even get back on the tracks. And my response to that is, what kind of life is that? Because even at 25, with a head full of emotions and hurt and pain and loss that I had never dealt with, I knew I knew that to live my life this way for the next 50 years was not an option. It was 
was not an option. And I went to work on myself. And when Jen read my bio, and she said that there's been 23 years of personal development, that's very true. I have listened to tens of thousands of audiobooks, read hundreds of books, and been to many, many seminars on how to become a better person. Because where I was at was not fun, and it wasn't enjoyable, and the outcomes that I was getting were not favorable. My relationships didn't work, I couldn't hold a job, and I was looking for the wrong kind of women. And when I started implementing different choices, because I wanted a different outcome, that's the key, isn't it? Is anybody in here familiar with the, is it 10 step or 12 step? 12, 12, 12 step. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not. What's the first one? I'll say it for you. You gotta want it. You gotta admit it. You've got to admit it, own it. And that's what I did. And when I did that, my life started to change because I opened myself up to making different choices. And until you do that, you won't have the kind of relationships that you maybe you truly want. Or maybe you're quite content with where they are. Regardless, C is the answer. Can't change the event. I can't go back to August 5th of 1991 and change the event. And to sit here and say, well, I was a victim. To sit here and say over and over is, well, that happened to me. And because of that, I'm a mess today. See, if you do that, you're, you're always going to be a victim in your life, and you're never going to have control of your life, and your relationships are never going to work, and you're never going to find fulfillment. I'll leave you with just a closing thought. I actually don't even like being called a motivational speaker because who wants to go listen to them? Quite frankly, it's all hype. Hopefully, I've given you some substance. Hopefully, I've given you guys some tools, some meat, some things to think about. The reticular activating system. These five response styles. But now it's up to you to take them and apply them. How, if you apply just one thing, imagine the different outcome that you're going to get from that. Because... 20 minutes from now, I'm not going to be here. And you're going to have to stand on your own. But you can work closer with your coworkers. You can have better relationships with your families, with your kids. You get a new start. It's called tomorrow. It's not next year. It's called tomorrow. We all get a new start. Make different choices. Create different outcomes. Thank you, Jennifer, for having me. Hopefully there was something of substance here. I appreciate you guys. Mm -hmm.